Have you ever had an incredible idea for a piece of art that you wanted to create, but didn't quite have the time or the skills to bring it to life? Well, thank God for AI. Nowadays, we have a whole plethora of different tools for generating images at our disposal. And today we're gonna to be looking at one which is called Midjourney. And honestly, I really think it's gonna blow you away with the quality of the images that it can generate. In this video, I'm gonna take you through all the steps from setting up your Midjourney account all the way to creating those dream images that you had in your mind. We'll also go through some of the tools that are included with Midjourney, which will help you get to that result even quicker. And please stick around till the very end of this video, as I will be showing a bunch of amazing artworks that were generated by Midjourney. Let me just start off with the fact that Midjourney doesn't have its own website, which you can use to generate images. What it does use is a tool called Discord, which is kind of like a WhatsApp for communities. So if you want a community about art or shoes or video games or anything that you can come up with, there's surely a Discord channel for that specific topic. So we're gonna start off with setting up an account on Discord for you. So navigate yourself to discord.com, click the login button in the top right corner, and then click on register and fill in the form. So your email address, your username, and your date of birth. As soon as you do that, confirm that you are in fact a human being and click OK. Next, discard the little box that shows up once you log into Discord. And this is basically it. This is Discord, which we're gonna be using for generating our art pieces using Midjourney. The last step that we need to take now is to go back into our email and verify that this is in fact our Discord account. So jump into your email, I'm using Gmail, click on verify and you're all set to go. All right, now we're gonna set you up with a Midjourney account. So navigate yourself to midjourney.com, click the sign in button at the bottom, then click authorize. And now we're gonna have to select our subscription. So there are options ranging from $8 to $120 per month, depending on how many images and how quickly you want to generate. There are a couple of other considerations as well, such as if you want your images to be shown publicly or do you want to keep them private? But generally, I think the $8 subscription should be enough. It gives you 200 generations of images per month, but I'm gonna go for the $30 one because I want an unlimited amount of images to generate and the standard plan will give me that. Unfortunately, there is no free plan in Midjourney these days. There used to be one, but the demand is so high that they can't do it anymore. There is one thing you can do for free, and that is to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos about artificial intelligence and tools based on artificial intelligence. But for now, let's move over to paying for this subscription. So I'll click OK, and that will take me to the payment screen. So I'll fill this in, and I'll see you on the other end. All right, now after setting up our subscription, we're back on the Discord channel. And this time, the difference is that we do see a little boat icon in the left sidebar. This is of course the icon for Midjourney, and if we click into it, we are gonna be greeted with a little bit of chaos, but don't worry for now, because we'll fix that very shortly. I want you to click on one of the newbie channels, which are listed in the left sidebar, and that will open up a chat with a lot of other people. And this is how Discord works. Basically, you're taking part in a conversation with the chatbot, but in the same conversation, you have other people also generating images. So that's why I was saying there's a bit of chaos going on where random people are generating even more random pictures. And as you're generating your own ones, they might get mumbled up with all the other ones. Let's just check it out for once, and then we'll try to fix the situation. The way you generate an image with Midjourney is you type slash imagine. Once you click enter, you'll be asked to fill in a prompt. So I'm gonna go with a very advanced prompt of cat in a hat and we'll see what happens. As you're waiting for your images to be generated, because this is a conversation between a bunch of random people, you will still see a lot of messages popping up with different images completely unrelated to your cat in the hat. You'll just have to ignore that and wait for your image to be created. All right, so we have four images of cats in hats. And if you click into the image, it will expand a little bit for you. All right, but now let's try to move away from this whole chaos. So what I want you to do is scroll through the conversation until you find a message from Midjourney bot. Click on the name and then click on the avatar and click send message. And that will open a brand new conversation, which is just between you and the Midjourney bot. So you won't see all those different messages from other people. 
which is great. Now you'll see that there's a couple of images in my conversation, but that's only because I've already started the conversation before I was recording the video. So those cars that you see, those are my prompts. All right, so we're at the point where you have an account on Midjourney, on Discord, and you know how to create a very basic prompt. Now we're gonna play around with all the different tools that are built into Midjourney. We're gonna start off with an image of a Zen garden with koi fish and cherry blossom trees, and we're gonna play around with the image a little bit. So here we go. We got four different images of the Zen garden that we discussed. Below those images, you'll see nine buttons. There are U1, V1, U2, V2, etc., and one which looks kind of like a refresh button. So what do they mean? Each of the pictures that you see above which are four options that you can choose from for the prompt that you've sent, they refer to each of the two buttons. So the first button is for U1 and V1, and then the second button is U2 and V2, etc. Here's how it works. If you like one of the images, let's say the first one, you have two options. Either you can upscale the image and create a larger image with higher resolution. So you would press U1 for upscale one. However, if you like the image, but you want to see a couple more examples of a similar looking image, then you can press V1 and that will generate four new images based on that first image. So I'm gonna create V1 to generate four more variations of the first image. And the images are relatively similar and I'm gonna go with the fourth one, which I like the most. So I'm gonna click U4 and that will create an upscaled version of that garden. All right, now what I can do is click into the image and then I see a little button which says open in browser. So I'll click that and that will open the original image in its full resolution, which in this case is 1024 by 1024. And then I can do whatever I want with it. Now you also see that below the image, you have a couple more options. So you got Vari Strong, Vari Subtle, Vari Region, and then you have Zoom and Upscale and a couple other buttons. So just to get a brief understanding of what they do, let's click on the Vari Strong button, which basically should give me an alternate version of this image with a strong tendency for changes. And so we have four new images, which are still in the same style of the original image. However, the way the items are aligned, like the little bridge and the lake and the trees are completely different to what they were in the previous image. So that's how this Vari Strong works. If we use the Vari Subtle, it will probably change very minuscule details of that image. All right, let's change the scenery a little bit. So we're gonna generate a cartoon raccoon uh, using an anime art style, and we'll see what happens. We got four images as always. They're all great, honestly, but my favorite one is the second one, which is probably the most realistic one as well, but it's wearing a cool jacket. So I'm gonna click into that one and upscale it. And since we've got it upscaled, let's have a look at some of the arrow buttons that we have below the image. So those buttons are used for changing the set of the image. So now we have a close up on its face. If we click the down arrow button, it should expand the size of the image to include a larger part of its body. So as it's generating, it gave me a bit of a fright because I thought it was just gonna generate the body of the raccoon. But as soon as it's generated, we see that it's actually a larger body image of the raccoon and his face. And those images honestly look almost identical to me. So it doesn't matter which one I choose. I'll go with the third one and upscale it. And let's finish the exercise off with zooming out. So once we click zoom out, it should take us out of the frame that we're in and show us a bit of the environment that the raccoon is standing in. And that's basically it. Now we have a raccoon standing in a street in his cute little red jacket. And so we've learned a couple of the tools of how Midjourney works. All right, let's move on. So we've seen one of the prompts that we can use within Midjourney and that's the imagine prompt. So every time we want to generate a picture, we type slash imagine. But there's so many other different prompts that we can use and we're gonna discover them right now. If you click the slash button, you'll already be greeted with a bunch of different options that you can select. And you can go through the list and read about each of the options. But what we're gonna be starting off with is the relax keywords. And the relax keywords basically means that now we're gonna be using a slower version of Midjourney, which doesn't use our fast tokens. As a bit of an explanation, Midjourney works in three tiers, the relaxed, fast, and turbo options. And of course the relaxed is, um, cheaper and slower, fast is somewhere in between, and turbo is expensive and fast. So if you're running out of your fast hours for generating, maybe you wanna switch over to relaxed 
and save those tokens for when you really need them. For now, I'm gonna switch back to the fast generation mode because I want to go through this tutorial with you. So I'll click slash and fast. All right, the next one is really cool because it allows us to reverse engineer our images. The command is called described. So we type slash describe and then we paste in an image from our drive or from a URL. So I'm gonna select an image that I've generated using DALI 3 actually the other day and I'll see what kind of description it's gonna give us. As you can see, it's given us four descriptions for that image and I am gonna select the third one and try and use that to generate another image. So I'm gonna use the imagine keyword again and paste in the prompt that Midjourney has generated for me. Okay, so the images are different but are they really that much different? It seems like Midjourney has given us a good basis of which we can start working off and we can start adding more description and details so that our newly generated image will resemble more the original one. The next one is very simple. It's just slash info. And what it does is it gives you details about your account. So it gives you information about when you've set it up and how long you've been using it. And it also tells you about those fast hours that you still have. All right, in the next part, I'm gonna show you a couple of prompts which I found on the internet, which I think are incredible. So have a look at this next prompt and see how much detail is hidden in that information. So we have information about a lot of the details of the face of the model in the image. We have the lighting conditions. We have the way the photo is being taken. We even have information about the actual camera that is being used for this prompt. So it's very specific and I would use it as a good template for any prompts that I'll be generating in the future. And as you could have imagined, the results are stunning. I mean, those pictures really look like they're actual photos. And if you didn't tell me that they were AI generated, I wouldn't probably realize at first glance. The next one, I messed up a little bit because I found a prompt for New York and didn't read through the whole thing. And I just changed the city to London but I didn't realize that there was the Empire State Building, which is obviously in New York. And Midjourney generated an image of London with the Empire State Building, but it seems like it's actually ignored the fact that it's in London. So if you look at the scene, it's very New York-like. Even the cars look more like cars that you would find in the US rather than in Europe. So I decided to fix the prompt, and instead of the Empire State Building, I've added the Tower of London, and the results are great as well. It's it does look like photos that you would find in a in a magazine. And it looks like it's been raining in two of the photos, so it's definitely London for sure. And the last prompt I wanted to show you is one with an image in the style of Jackson Pollock. So it's an abstract expressionist painting um, by Jackson Pollock. And I think the result is honestly so good that I wouldn't mind hanging something like that on my wall. So I'm definitely gonna be playing around a lot more with Midjourney these days and I hope you do too. And do let me know what you're gonna be generating and feel free to drop some prompts if you're working on something cool. Now, this was just a general overview of Midjourney, but we're definitely gonna have more advanced videos in the future where I'll describe more techniques on how to reach your goal with Midjourney. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.